What up, it's your boy Nick from MMA Pixels here with Robert Davis. Robert has a huge matchup coming up January 6, 209 Beatdown 4, Stockton Memorial Civic Auditorium. How are you doing, Robert? I'm doing uh I'm doing fine right now. Man, I'm so excited to talk to you right now. First off, I just wanna what what's your record? Uh in camo right now I'm three and one, but I mean including all my smoker matches and like all the extra stuff we do on the side about five and two. I seen uh I seen it said three and one and then three and oh, so I just wanted to make sure to clear that up. So overall, Yeah, I was kinda confused when they put the three and oh up. I mean I did a good good just a good little run there and I ran into some trouble. Uh, but yeah. That's it for now. I, and I noticed the uh, when you first you took your first fight and then you have kind of like a large gaps in between. Can you talk me through yeah. that? Uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I've never really thought about it. Um, but I do see that. I, I didn't fight for like a whole year and then I stepped in afterwards at 559, right? Yeah. Um, I think I was just pretty much training or, you know, just probably dealing with some injuries. Like, even, like, right now, I'm just, I was doing some running, and, I'm like, my calves are tore up, and I'm sore, so. Oh. At, like, how soon before the fight do you start to taper that off to less physical activity? Less physical activity, right. I mean, if you figure, uh, you know, like, you're heavy sparring, I've even heard of guys sparring hard up to, like, the day before the matches. Um, but for me, like, maybe typically a week, we really start to, like, hunker down and, uh, you know, figure out what we're going to do um, and, you know, try not to get injured because there's been plenty of times where there's people, you know, have a fight coming up and this and that or I've had an opponent coming up and, you know, they get injured like two days before the fight and then you've sold all these tickets and you put in all the time and, you know, you're just, you know, hoping someone is available. It kind of happens a lot, unfortunately, with the amateur scene around here. Right. So I noticed... You're really good at jiu-jitsu. Uh, what's your belt rank? Uh, right now, I'm an assistant instructor in jiu-jitsu under Team Marrera. Awesome. And what what, uh, what color belt? That's a uh, purple. Purple. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have three victories all by submission. Um, just yeah, man. The arm collector. I, you remind me of a uh, Damian Maya almost. You know, just get in there, take them down, and, and submit them. Yeah, dude. You know, you got to get it done fast. Um, you know, a lot of the times that uh, some of my smoker matches, I've let them go to the to the crowd, and you know, I've lost crowd decisions. So the best thing to do is just really get in there, strike it out, and uh, you know, get them to where you don't want to go, make them feel uncomfortable, strike to advance, and uh, you know, take the neck. Do you do any uh, jujitsu competitions also? Uh, not right now. I'm just pretty much just training in the gym. Um, but I mean, I've had teams, you know, move up there or even be invited to like more seminars and you know things like that i, I think i do more of the seminar thing um i took off down to uh newport beach like a couple months ago and that's where i got my certificate so um i i do i do like the jiu-jitsu tournaments just to see you know where you are as far as jiu-jitsu yeah. um but you know at the same time i like jiu-jitsu is fine but i've even seen damian maya get pounded out you know but just by striking, I think he just lost one of his recent matches. Um, and it's just one of those things where, you know, I have to stay a freestyle fighter because, you know, I have to have my striking, I have to have my wrestling, my jujitsu, my kickboxing, and all these other, you know, martial arts in order to win. Yeah. And I say so one dimension on it. Right, yeah. And, I mean, if you look at your opponent's record, he's got uh... – submissions i think tko and uh, decisions on there so it's a mm -hmm. compilation of everything yeah and that's funny too because last night we were, we were talking about how you know exciting i am because every single fight i've been in you know it always ends in a finish it doesn't matter you know if i'm finishing someone else or or, or you know i'm getting finished in the ring it's just one of those things where you know when i step in the cage something i'm throwing with bad intentions Right, yeah, and, and I know he's just as dangerous. So you know, it's gonna be we're all just swinging for the fences here. Right, and I know that like really, re the fans can see that. Um, mm -hmm. There's certain fighters, you know, like uh, obviously the Diaz brothers. When they get in there, it's a fight. It's not a sport. It's mm -hmm. a fight, and and the fans see that, and they can rally behind it. 
Uh-huh. And I think that that transcends a lot in the local scene. You know, I you guys are just not getting paid. You're doing it for fun, and it really shows. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, I mean, but uh, I mean, I, I'm sure all of us are. That's my opinion. You know, we all need to get in there and, uh, you know, make some type of dividends. So currently, you're ranked number ten in the state. Tony is ranked yeah. uh, fourteen. I see if, with a victory, you're probably looking at close to probably six, seven, I would say, in the rankings. Right, right. What, what would you say, say everything goes well, you, you get a victory this on uh, January 6th, what's next for you? Uh, uh, what comes next for me? I mean, even now, like, they've even shot the state title or, you know, other title matches to me on my team. Um, and, you know, I think I got one other guy who's going to be going pro next year. Um, and then me, I'm going to probably, this is, you know, my wife, Nick wants me to, you know, so this is my year, you know, so, uh, you know, hopefully I get this win and then we just take the next fight, maybe another couple months. Cause I got, uh, I'm renewing my license and my, I'm getting my physicals done today and all that stuff. So I got a whole nother year to go. So we got some fights ahead of us. Uh, the 27th of January is another show, Ismatic Fighting Championship in uh, Merced. I know that's a quick turnaround, but a couple of guys I talked to, we're going to try to jump on that as well. But uh, th- there's getting more and more shows around, so it's more consistent. I know 559 Fights puts on one every month, so it's... Right, yeah. See, that's the thing. You know, I get calls for fights every month. I'm tagging things every month. So, you know, getting a fight, it's not going to be so hard for me. It's just knowing when to take that fight. You just don't want to take every single fight, you know, because, uh, you know, you don't hold any type of power, you know. So me coming into this thing, I have to be able to just, you know, just stay focused and, you know, be patient and, you know, do my best. Is there anything that you're doing to prepare for Tony that you hadn't done in the past? Um, I know a lot of my team, they want me to, like, spar with some of the taller guys. And, you know, wh- one of my teammates actually beat Tony Charles. That's Frank Farmer. Um, so, you know, I, I've sparred with that guy. He's giving me good looks. You know, I've sparred with my other teammates. They've given me good looks. Um, and so, you know, we, well, like I said, I try to, like, just st- stick to my running. You know, I, I w- try to do, like, some type of workout every single day just to stay ready. You know, because it's not just about, you know, the fight. It's about, you know, it's about every day. You don't know uh, what's going to happen. Some guy walks up to you and just like, dude, like, leave me alone, you know? All right. You, you mentioned your teammate, uh, Frank Farmer. Uh, can you shout out a couple more of your teammates at your gym? Oh, yeah, of course, man. We got uh, uh, Neil Johnson. We got the whole uh, Shoto Force Jiu-Jitsu team there in Marina. Um, we got Team Take Flight and Salinas. Uh, you know, like Berto and MK, uh, we got Eddie Antonio over there working under him. Um, and then, like I said, Frank Farmer's there. He got a couple of belts with us. And, you know, he's a contender as well. So, yeah, he's, oh, man. he's always fighting for the belts. Yeah. Yeah, he actually, he's holding the 170 belt at 209 right now. So, you know, hopefully I, I come home with the 185 pound belt so we'll have you know to keep belts on the wall in the gym that is that where you guys have your belts right now in the gym in the gym yeah yeah i have some i got we got some belts inside the gym and then i hang some of my medals on my christmas tree <laughs> oh man you gotta you gotta take a picture and post it on your instagram i want to see it <laughs> right so where your champions train yeah all right man well where can the fans connect with you on social media uh, well, I'm at, at Mr. Davis on Instagram, and then I got a, a Robert Lee Davis MMA page, RLD MMA at Facebook.com. Um, and then uh, my regular Facebook profile that I just keep on this is just Robert Davis. And uh, one more thing before you go. It, is it true that your new nickname is Kimchi Boy? Kimchi Boy. <laughs> That's so funny. Where did you hear that? Oh man, I did my journalism. What? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what? crazy. Can you can you explain that? It's, I can explain it. That's funny. My wife Nick actually g- gave me that uh, nickname because 
you know, my nationality, I, I was raised in a Korean household for 11 years. So, uh, my grandmother, she's from North Korea. Uh, mm -hmm. And she defected to South Korea with her family. Long story short, she uh, moved over here with my grandfather uh, through the army. And so she raised me and she eat kimchi. Right. right. And so I've grown up on kimchi and now every time I'm like, you know, I want kimchi, I want kimchi. So we get, we ha I have this big old bucket of kimchi in my refrigerator right now. That, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I know, it's so not about funny. me. Not about me. I was in Korea in 2001, and then I came home, ah. and I was looking for these kimchi bowls. It's like uh, kind of like Top Ramen, but with kimchi in it, and it's spicy. Yeah, man. I love those things. I couldn't find them for like a year. I drove my wife nuts trying to find them, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, they sell them all, always at the Oriental store. They got seaweed, they got, you know, your kimchi, your, uh, you know, I don't know if you eat uh, pop choy and stuff like that. It's very very tasteful you know yeah yeah <laughs> all right man i right, appreciate your time robert davis versus tony charles january 6 209 beatdown for stockton memorial civic auditorium 525 north center street doors open at 4 p.m thanks for your time robert thanks so much